Hi, welcome to Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. We all want things in life. We all have goals for our retirement. Um, I personally would love to be on a beach somewhere with my toes in the sand, um, something cold and fruity at five o'clock every day, and uh, maybe some trips to Europe, some trips to Rome. Um, But all of that, guess what? It costs money. And um, though I would love to have money to do those things, there is actually a lot of need for money to take care of basic everyday things as we age. And sometimes what I see is um, people are aging and needing more assistance, and finances can be a real struggle. And what I have learned recently I'm about to share with you with a good friend of mine. Reagan Potts has been uh, with Edward Jones for as long as I've known you anyways. I met you through the Alzheimer's Association because you guys are very involved with the Alzheimer's Association. Yes, you and, we are. You and your, your hubby have taken a really active part in our community in so many ways, in so many volunteer positions. Um But I met you through the Alzheimer's Association. You began your career in actually in insurance. I did. And then you switched to finance. Uh, Tell me a little bit about that. What made that happen? So finance offers a completely different opportunity for folks to, you know, I can help them do incredible things which I absolutely love. So planning for fun things, not necessarily just typical auto insurance, homeowners insurance, stuff you have to have, but the fun things that you want to have. (gasps) The toes in the sand on the beach. Yeah, totally. Yeah. (laughs) So you moved into that um, how how long ago? 18 years now. 18 years. And Mm -hmm. you went straight to Edward Jones, right? I did. In fact, I was drugged to Jones kicking and screaming because... (laughs) People who loved me knew better than I did and said, this is exactly the right place for you, the right Mm -hmm, firm, mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful for them. And it has allowed you to uh, not only go to work for other people and serving other people, but also to do some of those awesome things that you and Ed do in our community, which I absolutely love. Um, But so today I wanted to bring you on because I got to be honest, um, when I first started in this business, in placing in senior living, um, I didn't think that I could invest because, you know, I, I'm a mom with six kids running around. Mm-hmm. I got a couple dogs. I mean, we we do okay. We have some great groceries on the table. We all drive our cars. Um, but I didn't think that I made enough money to invest until one day I sat down with a gentleman who had called me and he had his parents were looking to get some help. They needed assisted living for one parent and the other definitely needed some memory support. Well, memory support can really launch up there in cost. And he had all kinds of concerns. He said, you know, a storm had come through a couple of years ago. And the family home was still sitting in disrepair. So he said, I don't even know what we're going to be able to afford. Mm -hmm. He went to the family home to try to gather paperwork to meet with me. And we sat down together and he said, I thought my parents had nothing. Because if you look at the state of the house and you look at the way that they've lived for years, I would say they had nothing. But he said, I was going through the mail and I realized that they have this policy. And he pulled out a policy from Edward Jones that had a staggeringly large figure on it. And I said, whoa. He said, yeah, dad didn't know anything about this. This was mom's. I said, well, what did she do for a living? She must have been like a financial planner. He said, no. She stayed home and raised us. And then she went and worked in a cafeteria. She was the lunch lady. So someone had talked to Mm -hmm. her early enough in life and helped her to invest. A lunch lady, you know, 30 (laughs) years ago, I don't think they made a ton of money, but she invested enough that she was able to have all of her care needs met in the best place for her where she could, you know, she loved to walk around outside. We were able to find a place where the outside was inside. And it just impacted me so much 
that I immediately met with a financial advisor that is also with Edward Jones. Wonderful. Um, and and started my own personal plan. And so I wanted to bring you in today to to talk a little bit more about that. Like, when can you start that kind of a plan? And how much money do you have to have? And what kinds of things can we look at? Do you have do you have programs or products that we can look at that can help us later in life? It's such such great questions. It's never too late to start saving, but I will tell you it's always better to start earlier yes. rather than later. Yep. Because investing, it doesn't take a lot if you have time on your side. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking at investing just simply for your retirement future, we we use a a calculation called the rule of 72 and simply says, if you earn X number of percent per year, how long will it take you to double your money? And so we'll teach high schoolers today that, listen, if you make 10% on your investments, even if it's $25 a month, if you take 72 and divide that by 10%, it'll take 7.2 years to double your money. Oh my goodness. Okay. And you can do that every seven years. So that little bit of money, if you use a good diversified plan and you're consistent with it, you'd be amazed at how that money can compound and grow for you. Because time in the market Mm -hmm. is so much more important than trying to time the market and pick the best day to do what you can with as much as you can. Yeah. So investing in general, just start, right? Teach your kids (laughs) to start. And have the communication part, like you were talking about with the son and the mother, I wish families would start speaking more about finances. It is not a taboo topic anymore because your kids want to know just as much that you are going to be taken care of. You saved enough so that they know what the plan is and and they're not going to be responsible for it. Uh, And then they learn from you when you have those conversations. I love that you said that. And it is not too early to have that conversation. You and I can already be sitting down with our children and saying, here's what I want. I want my toes in the sand. Mm -hmm. I want something yummy at 5 o'clock, you know, in my hand. And then as I retire a little bit further, here are my wishes and my desires. And it is not too early for us to start talking about that. And you are so right. It is not too early for us to start saying, we're investing. Here's how this is happening. Mm -hmm. And also take that to your children and say, you need to be investing now because no one told me I could invest at 18, 19, and 20. Absolutely. And if I had, wow, the difference that it would make now. But the fact of the matter is that now I'm investing and I talk to other family members. I get calls all the time from the children of people and they their family members did not plan. There was nothing in place. Yeah. And now they are in, in a panic trying to help their parents. Mm-hmm. And they say, I don't want this to happen to me. What do I need to do? And I have gotten to a place where I am now saying, you need to get in touch with somebody who knows more than you about finances. Because let me just tell you, I don't know about what you guys do. I am not good at that. (laughs) That's my job security. That's okay. (laughs) So, and I know that I I do, it's worth it to me to pay a little something to somebody else to take that burden off my shoulders because I can't do it by myself. And especially if you're in the process of caring for family members. Yes. Maybe even you have kids at home and you have parents that you're caring for. Adding this extra item on your to-do list, Mm -hmm. you don't need the stress for it. I mean, that's what myself and my colleagues are for. So looking at planning for your own, let's say, long-term health expenses. Yes. Because the reality is seventy. there's a 70% chance you're going to need care in some fashion. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I mean, it's just ridiculous, but it's incredible. So you have to be able to start finding the right ways to fit that into your current budget now. And really, if if you're already doing planning for your retirement and your financial future, you really need to start looking at the long-term health care expense need between your 50 and 60 years old is when it really is kind of makes sense Mm because kids are usually out of college. 
You've got a little bit extra discretionary income. Now we can take it and spend it and go do fun travel now. But, or. <laughs> but we can take a little bit off to the side and prepare so that the last 20 to 30 years, you know what the plan is, your family's comfortable to plan, and you're able to afford and have control yes. of the kind of health care you want to have. That's what's most important. Yes. Because when you don't have the finances to pay for it, now you're at the mercy of the government aid programs telling you where you can go and who will provide care and nobody and, wants to be told what to do. And what you have to do with the little bit of money that you may have saved, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, so you and I have talked before. Uh, there are some products that you guys have out there mm -hmm. that it does require a little bit of an investment up front. But it's it seemed to me like it's win-win. So can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. So when you think about those kinds of care options, right, you can assume the risk yourself, which basically says, I'm going to save all my own money and I'm going to pay for it out of pocket, which is an option if you've saved enough money for that. But you run the risk of we don't know what kind of health care need you're going to need and how long that's going to be or what the costs are going to mm. be. So there's a huge risk and you could run out of money and not be able to do what you had hoped to do for your children and your family along the way. But that's always an option. The second option is you can transfer that risk using different styles of insurance. So there are traditional healthcare style policies that you can purchase now that buy you the biggest benefit. The, the hard part with those are they are expensive. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's fewer and fewer companies writing those in today's world because Alzheimer's has blown up that entire industry. And also we're living longer uh, recently. Recently, mm -hmm. I just saw that the fastest growing demographic is the 100 and over yeah. age group. It is. And so we are definitely living longer. <laughs> Without question, right? And you think about it, if, if you retire at 65, mm -hmm. I have 100-year-old clients. You're going to wow. be retired longer than the no total number of years you may have worked. Yeah. And so your personal finances have to last for all of those needs and then you tack on, you're going to need most likely about a half a million dollars of health care money just in normal doctor expenses over your lifetime, mm -hmm. but then also those assisted living options too. Yep. So if you partner with an insurance company using a traditional health insurance policy, that gives you some benefits. There are other hybrid products too where you can leverage your money using life insurance. And so what that means is there are some companies where – you can buy a policy for a smaller amount of death benefit, mm -hmm. but they, you can actually access some of their monies for long-term care needs as well. Yes. And then there are just traditional life insurance policies where you're buying a death benefit with a writer on it that says, if I need this for chronic illness, not just Alzheimer's or long-term care needs, I can access it too. So cancer... Mm -hmm. or heart disease, any of those other things. Diabetes, okay. you know, other things that are coming along now that are more prevalent than before. It just gives you more flexibility in yeah. how you can use their money first before you ever have to start dipping into your bucket of money, which could affect your family and regular finances. And then if you never need that, if, you know, we all get what we dream of and we just go to sleep one night yeah. and it's peaceful and, you know, you were at the beach with your toes in the sand <laughs> at five o'clock, but then you just drift off peacefully to sleep and you just don't wake up the next day and you never needed all that long-term care or you never needed to go yeah. numerous times to the doctor's office, then you've got a life insurance policy to pass then on to your family. You got it, right? I and love that. A lot of folks, when we first started into this long-term care insurance with Edward Jones, we just did the health insurance. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the objections were, but what if I never use it? I've paid for this my whole life and I get yes, nothing out of exactly. it. Exactly. You know, and it's kind of like your homeowner's insurance. Mm -hmm. We all pray our home does not burn down. Right. <laughs> and statistically, it's most likely not going to do that, but you keep paying for it just yeah. in case. But 
that's a lot of money if you're paying at 50 years old until you live to be 100 for something you may never use. So the life insurance and the hybrid products have really become the most popular version of how to prepare for long-term care needs for family members. Yeah. I And I love that. The more I hear about that, you're right. It's the flexibility. It's the, you know, we don't know what happens in the future. Mm -hmm. So we do our best to make sure that we have made good plans and that we are preparing as much as possible. And having something with that flexibility is just a great idea because we don't know what God has for us. We don't know what the plan is for tomorrow. Absolutely. So Edward Jones, I know you have, you in particular, and several of your other Edward Jones team members that I know of, have done a fantastic job of not only just being a financial advisor, but man, I have watched you hold people's hands as they've aged and just be an excellent resource to them. Do you have a do you have a story for us that you can share? <laughs> it's why we do this, right? I mean, it's it's the people that we have relationships with and we spend the time and effort getting to know them as people, not just their accounts and their money. So my favorite story is probably my most recent. I had an adorable widower um, who really didn't have a whole lot of family left. Mm -hmm. She was estranged from those that she had some kind of relationship with for many, many years. And she always just worried, but, you know, what's going to happen to me? Who is going to take care of me? How are we going to handle this? And I just fell in love with her and adopted her basically into my yeah. own family because <laughs> you couldn't help it. Um, and so with that, I always just pictured, ah, oh, we got plenty of time. It'll be down the road and, mm -hmm. you know, we can, we'll figure it out when we get there. But man, when that moment comes, it can be gradual, but it can be so sudden. sudden. Yeah. And it was just incredible to be able to know that she trusted me enough to be a part of her family and help guide them through what they had to do to find her the right facility, to mm -hmm. make sure she was mm -hmm. being taken care of, and to alleviate all of their concerns that it doesn't matter how much it costs, we've planned for this. Yeah. We have it here. She had it. We know exactly what we're doing with it. Let's just fit, get her comfortable, make her happy, and we'll take care of the rest. And that it's fulfilling and sad yeah. all at the same time, heart-wrenching, but... It just made me proud to know we did our jobs the way we were supposed to by caring yeah. for them and more about them than what typically you might find. So you listened to her needs. Yeah. You put a plan in place. She got everything she needed. And then she was able in her last days to have exactly what she wanted. Yeah. And I love that. Um, I think that that makes – for a great story, and I, I really do hope that that is what I find at the end of my days is somebody that's caring and compassionate enough to help with that. Now, Edward Jones is uh, the company that you work with. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that people should be asking if they don't have access to Edward Jones? They don't have – everybody's not going to have access to you. Right. <laughs> um, so what are some of the good questions to ask if you're looking for a financial advisor to kind of ride alongside life with you? So I, it's always – for me, it's the relationship and the personality mm -hmm. because it all comes down to trusting the person you're working with. Oh, uh, Yeah. Right. It doesn't. There are phenomenal advisors across the entire industry at every single firm. You just have to find the right one that fits with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So ask them, you know, what is their philosophy on investing money? Why, why do they choose that? How do they want to participate in the relationship with you? Do they want mm -hmm. to have a relationship with you or do they want it to be strictly transactional? Right. And then what is their plan for how you age through your lifetime? Are they going to partner with you and change the relationship and adjust and plan for a full comprehensive analysis of your life goals? Because frankly, life happens. It sure and the does. beautiful <laughs> plans we create are destroyed and we have to mm -hmm. stop and shift gears and recreate a new plan. Plan B, plan C, plan D. Yep. Right. Um, and you want to know what that looks like for you and for them. I mean, they could be 40 years in this industry and ready to exit stage left. You need to know who's next in line to help care for you, and will they know you 
and right. of you and the whole past relationship you've had, oh, yeah. how do you make that happen? So for me, it's not necessarily how much money do I have and do I have enough money to invest with that company. Mm-hmm. You need to find the right fit for yourself and ha- make sure that they can work with you the way you're ready to. Yeah, I like that. Uh, and you just you just mentioned something else. Do I have enough money to invest? What is the smallest amount that you can start <laughs> investing with? So at my firm, mm-hmm. um, we do not have account minimums when we open accounts for folks. So the smallest amount we could purchase is probably $25 a month. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you can definitely bring those 16, 17, 18-year-olds who have those part-time summer jobs, you know, what they can start investing for themselves all the way around. I love that because, you know, I'm going back to to sit with my family tonight and I'm going <laughs> to say, okay, Reagan said all it takes is $25 with Edward Jones. So mm-hmm. get going, get $25 out of that paycheck. So, um, but all this has been great information and I just really appreciate you showing up and in, in answering questions. If people have more questions that you would like to ask of Reagan. I would love to get any feedback. And also, uh, just because the algorithm likes it, if you can like and subscribe, that would be so great. But really what we do with these podcasts is they're meant to be shared. They're meant to be a tool so that others can learn. So like, uh, share, like, and subscribe and share. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.